Hi, boys and girls. Our chrysalides have been in their habitat for three days now. Their shells have gotten strong enough that we can move them into a new habitat. When it's time for them to come out, the cup is no longer big enough for them to grow and survive as butterflies. So here's what we need to do. In order to move the caterpillars into their new habitat, the directions have told us to take the lid off of the cup very carefully. Look at the chrysalis shake. It has been disturbed in its cup as I was trying to take off the lid. The chrysalis is shaking because it's telling me to go away. This is a defense mechanism. It's a way for the caterpillar inside to protect itself from predators. That way, it doesn't get eaten while it's transforming. Isn't that cool? Do you see the webbing that is still attached to the cup? In order to keep the caterpillar safe, we need to clean off some of the webbing. Look at those little guys go. In order to protect our caterpillars, I'm going to very carefully remove some of that extra webbing that is still attached to the chrysalides. It's important to remove all of that webbing because when the butterflies emerge or come out of their chrysalises, they can be very delicate. So if the webs get in the way, it can prevent them from coming out properly. Webbing that remains in the way can even damage a butterfly's wings. All done. Here's a closer look. Okay, next we're going to place the lid inside of the caterpillar's new habitat. This little stand will hold them nice and safely until they're ready to emerge. And when the caterpillars come out of their chrysalides, they will have enough room to fly around. Now that the lid is off of our caterpillar cup, let's take a look inside to see what we can observe. If you look closely, you can see that the caterpillars had taken down a lot of their webbing from the top of the cup. It has fallen along the sides to the bottom. There's also a lot of frass. After a week of eating, there's a lot of caterpillar waste. Did you also observe the pieces of exoskeleton that were left behind? Remember, as our caterpillars grew, they got too big for their exoskeletons, and so they shed them in order to grow a new one. There's one last thing to mention. If you look, you can see that our little caterpillar is still at the bottom of the cup. Sadly, he did not grow big enough to turn into a chrysalis. I was hoping that once we were able to take the lid off of the cup, that this little guy would be able to be released and he would do better out in the world on his own. But he did not make it. Not all caterpillars turn into butterflies. What else should we include in the butterfly's new habitat? Do you see anything else that it would enjoy once it emerges from its chrysalis? Here are some things that I have found in our yard. Which of these things do you think would be good to include in our caterpillar's new habitat? Mulch, sticks, leaves, a wiffle ball, and rocks. Any of these natural items would be perfect to put inside our butterfly's new habitat. The sticks and mulch and rocks can be a great place for our butterflies to perch on and rest after
after they come out of their chrysalides. The wiffle ball, however, is unnecessary for a butterfly. We don't need that in its habitat. Can a butterfly play catch? Our habitat is ready for our caterpillars to come out of their chrysalides. When that happens, our butterflies will have a nice place to live just for a couple of days while they get bigger and stronger and dry their wings. There's just one more thing that our butterflies will need when they emerge from their chrysalides. Do you know what it is? They have a safe habitat. They have some places to perch, but what are they missing? That's right, our butterflies will need some food. So as soon as that first butterfly emerges from its chrysalis, we will make some nectar for it to drink. I'll show you that in our next video. That's all for today. Have a great afternoon. See you soon. Bye.